Hey y'all, it's Melissa, author of the blog Melly Sews and designer behind Blank Slate Patterns. And today I've got a project that is perfect for gifts. It's these slippers. And I'm gonna share a pattern to make them as well as show you how to change the size of the pattern. These are lined and fuzzy and they are super cozy. So, what I need you to do is check out the link in the description, or if you can see it, if it's showing up in the video, there should be a link up here to go get the pattern, and then meet me back at the camera, and we're going to talk about how to make sure that pattern is sized for your foot. When you first print out your pattern, what you're going to have is a sole and an upper piece. And these are sized for a size 6 foot. So if you measure it here down this straight line, what you want that to be is you want that to be your foot size or the person's foot size plus one inch. If you're making these as a gift and you're not exactly certain what size that person wears, you um, can go online and you can look for a shoe size chart and it will tell you what the length of the foot should be. So you'll just add one inch to that. Now, here's how we're going to add the inch. You'll see that there are these um, vertical and horizontal lines on the pattern. What you want to do is you're going to cut the pattern on those horizontal lines. So for example, let's say that you needed to make this pattern a half inch longer than it already is. So you're going to split that between these two lines. So I'm going to move that a quarter of an inch and I'm going to move the bottom a quarter of an inch here. And then I would retrace my pattern and this is going to be the size that I need for that foot. If the person has a particularly wide foot or a particularly narrow foot, you're going to want to cut down the vertical line and you will take your pieces for a wider foot, you'll spread the pieces apart. For a narrower foot, you would put them together. So let's say, for example, you wanted to make a child size one. You'd actually end up cutting on all these lines so that you had six pieces. And then you would need to overlap. And again, look up shoe charts online. Those are a great reference. You would overlap the same amount and then you would overlap the length. And you see how now that I've got a much smaller and narrower pattern. Tape that to your paper and then retrace it. That would be how you would make it smaller. Now, this pattern and this pattern piece both have to be altered. So these lines are the same as your vertical lines. If you overlapped or you spread, or sorry, they're the same as your horizontal lines on this piece. If you overlapped or you spread your shoe, like if you were making that longer shoe, you would want to spread the same amount on these two lines to make sure that this piece is still going to match that piece. So we're gonna, we would spread that and then we would also spread this piece. And that would be what you would cut out. If you were overlapping, same thing, you would overlap. If you um, made the shoe wider or narrower, that's this line. So you would cut on that line and you would overlap those pieces. If you do choose to make the foot a little wider or narrower, I'm going to suggest that you actually do it mostly in the toe. This area is the toe of the shoe and that's mostly where, sh where the foot gets um, wider or narrower. So you might do a gap kind of like this, make it a little um, triangle shaped or pie wedge shaped so that you do have more width in the um, toe and ball of the foot area. And then this part here, this width, is actually what goes up the ankle on the shoe. So this doesn't need to have much width added to it. If you are making a child's shoe though, this will need to be overlapped because this is the ankle part of the shoe and you don't want it to come way up their leg because their ankles are lower to the ground. So again, um, start with the basic pattern, figure out the adjustments you need to make to it, and then what we need is we need four of these cut out of your main fabric, and you need to make sure you have two right and two left, 
and we need two of these cut out of your main fabric and then we need all of those pieces cut out again of the lining. So four of these out of the lining and two of these out of the lining. Once you have that stuff cut out, meet me back at the camera and we'll talk about how to assemble these shoes. Now that we've made our pattern, let's go ahead and make sure we've got our fabric cut out. You should be using a stretch fleece, which almost all of them do. Just don't use a woven fabric with no stretch. So you should have four of the upper shoe out of the outer fabric and four of the lining fabric for the upper shoe. Make sure that you've got mirror images for each foot so that there's a right side and a left side. You should also have two of the outer fabric soles and then you should have two of the lining fabric soles. Now what we're going to stitch first is we are going to stitch the outer fabric. Place it right sides together, the upper piece, and you're going to start at this point where the curve turns into a straight line. Start there, back stitch, and then stitch down to the toe using a one quarter inch seam and a straight stitch. You're also going to stitch the heel seam, again using a straight stitch and a one quarter inch seam. Repeat this on the other outer fabric pieces. However, on the lining pieces, we're going to change it up just a little bit. The foot seam is going to be sewn exactly the same. However, in the heel seam, you want to leave a hole. So you're going to stitch just the top and just the bottom and leave a hole in between. This is actually where we'll turn the slipper right side out later. So just stitch that top and bottom portion. Just a little tip here, if you're sewing really bulky fabric like this Sherpa that I'm using, Wonder Clips are really great for holding those edges together, particularly when you have a very small seam allowance. These will make sure that you actually sew both pieces of fabric together and that the one underneath doesn't like squish under so that you can't, so that you didn't catch it in the seam. I'm going to go ahead and start on that and then I will meet you back at the camera to show you what this looks like when it's done and what the next step is. Now that we've gone ahead and we've gotten that stitched, we stitched across the toe and down the heel and remember on the outer fabric, or sorry, the lining fabric, we did leave a gap. This is what it looks like and you can see if I open this up that you can start to, start to see kind of the slipper shape here. So what we want to do next is we want to take this and we want to pin it right sides together with the sole of the shoe. Now be careful if your fleece doesn't have a very clear right side, just make sure that you have a right and a left one before you start this pinning because it can get confusing later. So you're going to want to center up that seam with this center of the toe and go ahead and pin that in place. And then you want to do the same thing with the back seam. You want to center that up on the heel and pin that in place. And then once you've got those two points pinned, you'll go and pin the curved seams all the way around so that what it looks like is going to be more like this. So you've got the upper pinned all the way around to the sole. And you'll go ahead and you'll stitch that in place. If you ha are using something really thick, kind of like this Sherpa fleece that I'm using, you can also wonder clip it instead of pin it, but same thing, you're going to want to stitch it all the way around. And when you're done stitching, what it's gonna look like is this. And actually with the lining fabric, once we're done stitching that part, we want to go ahead and turn this right side out because the next step we're going to be doing with the lining right side out. The outer fabric will stay wrong side out. And again, remember the lining fabric does have this hole in the back of the heel here that we'll be using later. So I'm going to go ahead and finish stitching up my other pieces so that we can get to the next step. Let me go ahead and do that and then I will meet you back at the camera. Okay, now that I have my shoes stitched tops to bottom, um, the next thing that needs to happen is I need to take the outer fabric 
and I need to stuff the lining inside. So my outer fabric is wrong side out, my lining is right side out, and you need to make sure that when you're looking at these, where one's wrong side and one's right side, that these are both the same foot. So like I can see these are both a left foot, and that's what I want when I put them together. So you're going to stuff the lining inside the shoe, and then we need to stitch around the ankle opening here. So when you line those all up and you've got them clipped together, it's going to look like this, and you want to stitch around that area. And I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I will meet you back on camera to show you how we finish these up. We are almost done with these slippers. So I've sewn around the ankle of each of these. And I want to make a note that if you're working with a fabric like this plushy Sherpa that I'm working with, it can be difficult, particularly with such small seams. So sometimes you may have to sew from one side of the fabric and then flip everything over and sew it with the needle on the other side of the fabric just to make sure that you catch every little bit. Fleece is really forgiving though, and especially something like the Sherpa fleece, if you've stitched more than once, it's seriously not really going to show on the outside, as you'll see after the next step. So what you need to do next is you need to find that hole that you left in the back heel of the lining fabric, and then we're going to turn the entire slipper right side out through that hole. Once it's right side out, it'll look, it'll look like two conjoined slippers here. And you're going to shove the lining fabric to the inside of the slipper and get it all the way down in the toe there so that somebody can put their foot in it. Now if you wanted to add even more stability to these slippers once they are sewn, you can also, through this hole in the heel, you could take one of those um, shoe inserts that you can buy at the drugstore and you could stick that into the bottom of the shoe. One more modification, you'll notice that I just use plain old fleece on mine. I have a few pairs of shoes like this that are just plain old fleece and they work fine for me. They're kind of like thicker socks. But if you were going to be walking around and concerned about slipping, for example with somebody elderly or with a young child, you might want to add um, a non-slip surface to this sole. You can do that in a few ways. First of all, you can use non-slip fabric instead of the fleece for the sole. Or you can usually use like the puffy shiny fabric paint. You can use that and paint it onto the bottom and let it dry and that will just help provide some traction if that's something you need. So now that the slipper is right side out, you can see when it's worn, you cuff down the sides there. And then that gets us our slipper. And the last thing we need to do is sew up this hole that we left in the heel. So I am just going to hand stitch that shut. And I'm just using needle and thread. I like to use a double strand of thread and knot it. You can use a whip stitch that will get hidden in this um, Sherpa, but if you're using regular fleece, you might want to go ahead and use a ladder stitch. And I'll put it, go ahead and put a link down in the description to another video where I show a close-up of how I was doing a blind stitch to close up a hole like this. So I'm just going to stitch that hole shut, and then as you can see, I have a cute slipper and it's all done.